is good, is he not? Glory to His name. 
there to my heart was the blood of God. Glory to His name. Oh, precious fountain that saves from sin. I am so glad I have entered in. There Jesus saves and He keeps me. Glory to His name. Yeah, glory to His name. Glory to His name. There to my heart was the blood. Glory to His name. Come to this fountain so rich. And sweet. Cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge into day and be made complete. Glory to His name. Yeah, glory to His name. Glory to His name. There to my heart was the blood of life. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. Father, in the name of Jesus. That you would touch. Touch our hearts, our minds, and our soul, God. Fill us with your power and your love, Father. In Jesus' name. Father God, we lift up our country to you. We ask God for revival. God, we need revival from the White House to our house to in this house, God. Nothing else is going to do, Father. Father, we lift up our troops. God, as they're dispersed all over this planet, Father, protecting us. We ask God that you would protect them and God that you would keep their families safe while they're away. Father, for our governor, 
our mayor, and our city police. We ask God that you would guide and lead them in the way that you want them to lead, Father, we pray. Father, we lift up our firefighters to you, keep them safe. We continue to lift up Isaac Zamora and Gary S Simon. Father, burn victims from a, a fire, God. Heal them both, God, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Father, we lift up Bonnie, Philip, Phyllis the priest, Nelda Abair, Debbie Ashlock, Darlene Booty, James Strickland, Parker Mills, Max, Brad with a brain tumor, Lynette, Jessica Brown, Sherry Gum, Travis, Jimmy Wyman, Marianne in Alberta, Canada. Father, we talked with her today. Father, we pray for a special healing in her body, God. Jude Viator, Michelle Brandt, Joe Ledette, Kelly, Connie Dale Miller, and Jesse Rowe, Father, all with cancer. God, we lift them up to you right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. We pray for a healing in their body, Father. Heal them, God, like no one else can, Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Father, for healing, we pray for Sister Angela, Kelly, Keisha, Carrie A. Bear, Stephen Bell, Missy Bonan, Nan Faulkner, Dalton Thibodeau, Rayanne Connolly, Raymond Romero, Debbie Broussard, Michelle, Cassie, Casey Williamson, Lynn and Cinder Rossonet, Philip Dayton Sr., Mark with surgery, Michelle with lung problems, Father, Sarah Boudreaux, Sadie Como, Ruth Thompson, Jill Longline, Roland Fruge, Raymond Booty, Kirk Winthrop, Teresa Duga, Tiffany Gerard, back problems, Father. Gerald Lashley, salvation and healing from cancer. Roy Pierce, Angie Bradford, Kathy Fontenot, Michaela Elliston, Pernell Delahousie, Emil Collins, Trudy's mother, Ron Hubbard, Blake Duet, Jamie. David Patello with liver problems, Father. Brother Phil and Sister Connie Green, Father. All having a need in their body. Father, we pray right now, God, for a healing. Touch God. Move tonight in Jesus' name. Heal each you and every one of them, Father. Father, Dolores is praying that, God, that you would open a door for a house for her, Father. We pray in Jesus' name. Jeremy Booties, back from surgery, successful. Father, we thank you. Sandra Landry's surgery was successful. Father, we thank you from where you brought them from. We ask God for a total healing in each one of them, God, right now. In Jesus' name. Father, we pray that your spirit would just settle in here, Father. Let that peace that passes all understanding just touch each and every one of us. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. How is everybody? Very good. Praise God. Good too. 
Yeah, man, another day, another 50 cents, right? Yeah. $3.70 fuel, we ought to make it just fine, right? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Absolutely. We didn't get a, we didn't get no uh, rains that come down this week and flooded us all out or anything. No, I mean, man, Easter went by so smooth and so good. And uh, I don't know how to act. I mean, you know, if it weren't for bad weather, we'd have no weather at all, right? No, man, God is really blessing us with some good weather this week. Praise God. Yeah, every dog needs to have his day, right? Yeah. Uh, how many of y'all got your papers? Got your paper? <laughs> how many of y'all got your Bible? Got my Bible. Yeah, I got my, I got my Bible this Wednesday. Got my Bible. Last Wednesday, I didn't know what happened. I looked around, and I didn't have my Bible. So, uh, yeah, my wife ran and got it. Praise God. Yes, she did. She took care of, God takes care of fools and little children by giving me a beautiful wife to help get me through the things where I can't do it, right? God is good. Today, the paper that we're working on, the lesson that we're working on, God bless you, is be still. Man, I'll tell you what, that's a hard one, ain't it? Be still. You ever seen a kid where you tell him, you ever had the steel game? You ever done the steel game with a kid? <laughs> it's a quick game. It only lasts about 30 seconds. So, uh, <laughs> right? Isn't that right? It's kind of like the quiet game, right? I used to get tickled at my son Matthew. I'd say, we'd get in the car to go somewhere, and I'd say, let's play the quiet game. He'd say, okay, daddy. I'd say, one, two, three, go. He'd say, let's be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Troubles come along. When troubles come along, somehow everything goes out the window, and we think that we've got to kick in and start trying to figure out how to fix it, don't we? We want to start acting immediately, right? Man, you let something happen, immediately we go into act mode when a lot of times we probably need to go into pray mode. You know? Uh, troubles hit, first thing you do is you want to act. Most, most time, you overreact. You know, one of the things that it takes to be a NASCAR driver is to learn how to not overreact. See? Uh, it's real easy whenever you get in the mind you, and the back end of your vehicle starts spinning around to try to jerk it back the other direction, but they teach them to turn into the spin and go sideways. It's the craziest thing if you ever watch that. They're going this way, and they turn their wheels this way. <laughs> that doesn't make sense, does it? But see, the, you can't overreact whenever you're getting into trouble or you're going to end up getting in a wreck. Amen. How many got in a bind before and didn't wait on God? Well, I'm glad to know that I'm not all alone in my foolishness. Um, we get so busy working a lot of times trying to work it out that we get in the way, don't we? Man, I'm telling you what, if you want to talk, I can give you a recipe on how to mess up a perfectly good plan. Just, just start working, right? Start working, don't pray. Try to get in the way. You know, it's funny that I, whenever I had my electrical company, I'll never forget this, and this guy will never forget it either. Uh, <laughs> a buddy of mine called and asked me if I'd come do some electrical work on his house. I said, sure, man. I get over there, and I am start looking it all over. And, and uh, he said, you going to give me a good deal? I said, yeah, I'm going to give you a good deal. 
So we got down to the end of it. He goes, well, how much is it? And I said, well, to, for, a, for a brand new service and a complete, you know, complete rewire, I said, you know, I'll have to work, you know, it out and I'll have to do a lot of it myself. So I'm looking at about $7,000. He said, well, how much, how much would it be if I helped? I said, put $10,000 on top of that. Put $10,000 on top of that. He goes, what? I said, because if I have to work and go back and fix the things that you tried to help me on, it's going to take me three times as long. I said, matter of fact, I said, I'll give you a 10% discount if you leave and I don't see you till I'm done. <laughs> see, whenever we're trying to get things done, whenever whenever God's working out plans, you know, I'm just wondering sometimes how many times God has to go, well, I knew that you were going to do this, so I added this into the plan. You know, I knew, or, or I used to tell my guys whenever they were working, I said, you know, it's a lot of times we don't have time to do it right the first time that we've got to take time to go back and do it again, Right? Sometimes whenever we try to get in the way of, of doing things for God, sometimes we get in the way and a lot of times we've got to go back and start all over to do it again, right? There was this man by the name of Rumi, R-U-M-I, Rumi. He had a great saying. It said, the quieter you become, the more you can hear, right? The quieter you become, the more you can hear. Well, I don't know. I've never been quite long enough to hear. <laughs> Turn, if you would, to Luke 10, 38. When you get there, say amen. Luke 10, 38. Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village, he's talking about Jesus, and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his words. But Martha was distracted with much serving. She approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, might as well say, Marsha, Marsha, right? You'd had to be in our age to know that one. Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. See, Jesus' plan was, she was worried about serving and taking care of things right then. I saw a billboard sign. Uh, I call them a billboard sign. I guess they're not. They're on Facebook, right? I saw, saw a post on there. And I, and I thought, man, if more people held to that, what kind of country would we be in? It said, your child's chances to be a professional ball player is at 3%. But there's a 100% chance that your child is going to need God and Jesus. Spend time where time needs to be spent. See, that's what's going on here. See, Mar Martha, Martha had it figured out. She was sitting and listening to Jesus because she knew where she needed to be. Mary, on the other hand, was tied up with being busy and working and basically getting in the way. Trying to serve, trying to do good, had the right heart.
Don't get caught up in the hustle. Get freed up in his promises. That's good word. I'll say it again. Don't get caught up in the hustle. Get freed up in his promises. See, he, he promised that he's never going to forsake us. He's promised he's going to take care of us. See, we get so caught up in the hustle sometimes, and we don't we forget all about the promises that he's made to us, right? Psalms 46. Let's go there if we would. Psalms 46, verse 10. When you get there, say amen. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Be still and know that I am God. Man, that that's... That, that hits really close to home, to be still and know that I am God. In other words, quit trying to handle all your problems on your own. Put your problems where the problem can be solved, and that's in the hands of Jesus and God. Amen? See, be still. Start receiving joy in Christ instead of paying attention to the storm. See, whenever Jesus was in the bottom of the boat asleep, and all the apostles were freaking out because the storm was coming, and he was asleep in the bottom of the boat. See, they could have stopped and started receiving the joy of watching the lightning storm, knowing that Jesus had them protected. But instead, they got so caught up in the storm, they forgot who was with them. See, we can get so caught up in the storm sometimes, we forget who is with us. And he is with us. You know, uh, how many people like to watch lightning storms? Am I the only one? Man, I love a lightning storm. I used to be my favorite thing to do was to go out and watch lightning storms. And boy, you can have some in Texas now. I mean, there are a bunch of lightning storms in Texas. And there you can see a good long ways in places. That back home where I lived, all they have is little small mesquite trees for a while. Uh, they're around Wichita Falls, Texas. It's And it's almost so flat a buddy of mine over in uh, McCamey said that he had a dog that ran away and he watched him run away for three days. So, uh, you know, you can see it a long ways off. And you can see those lightning storms happening. And I used to get so excited whenever I saw a lightning storm coming. And, and I'll never forget one time I, I went out and I had a metal carport. And I went out and I got underneath that wet metal carport to watch the lightning storm. And man, that lightning was all around and finally it hit out in the field on a high line wire and the pink ball started rolling down that wire. And I was, man, wow, man, that's beautiful. And then I realized that it was going for the transformer for the house. <laughs> and I couldn't get away fast enough before it exploded and the, and the sound echoed underneath that carport and my ears are still ringing to this day okay sometimes you can get too close to the storm and not realize where your protection's at and that's through jesus be still start receiving joy in christ instead of paying attention to the storm pay attention to who who has got you and who will protect you turn to psalms 107 When you get there, say amen. Psalms 107, 
Psalms 107, verse 23. When you get there, say amen. Those who go down to the sea in ships, who do business on great waters, they see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. For he commands and raises the stormy wind, which lifts up the waves of the sea. They mount up to the heavens and they go down to the depths. Their soul melts because of trouble. They reel to and fro and stagger like drunken men and are at their wits' end. And then they cry out to the Lord in their trouble. And he brings them out of their distress and he calms the storm so that its waves are still. Then they are glad because... They are quiet. This was written about 1,100 years before Jesus was in the boat. Back in Mark 4.38. We're going to get there in a second. I'm jumping ahead of myself. How many times have you caught yourself in the midst of a storm, in the midst of the battle, in the midst of everything that's going on, and you say, why wait until you're at your wit's end before you stop to pray? I don't know how many times I've been at the hospital and I walk in. I was in the hospital today. I didn't hear it there, thank God. In the hospital today, visiting some people, and uh, most time you go in the hospital and someone says, "Ma'am, the doctor, they've done this, and they've done this, and and we've done this, and and we've 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 had surgery on this, and and everything else that we've done. The only thing left to do is pray. <laughs> Absolutely, why not do that first? Why why wait until you get to your complete wits end?" Whenever you've given up on, on everything else before you turn to Jesus. See, 2830 tells the story, and they cry out to the Lord in their trouble, and he brings them out of their distress, and he calms the storm so that the waves are still. Turn, turn to Mark 438. You get there, say amen. I was talking about Jesus. But he was in the stern asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? See, I get tickled at this because... He didn't care because they weren't perishing. <laughs> you know? Um, then he rose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace, be still. Did you notice how he rebuked the wind? Peace, be still commandment and the wind ceased and there was a great calm but he said to them why are you so fearful how is it that you have no faith boy i would like to say that i would be in the boat going oh yeah we got jesus with it we'd be okay but that's real good until you look out and you can't see any land have you ever been out in the ocean so far that you can't see any land Man, I'm telling you, that, that's, a, uh, that's a feeling that will bring you a little closer to your thoughts with God. <laughs> I promise you, whenever you're out there in the middle of nowhere and you can't see any land. 
And, you know, if you turn around just a little bit, if you don't pay very close attention, the next thing you know, you're lost. Because there's no markers, there's no nothing. That's whenever the trouble comes, when there's no markers, there's no lighthouse to lead the way, right? Stop fearing and start trusting in Jesus. Start trusting in God. Stop fearing. Stop, stop freaking out every time you get in a little bit of trouble and, and start quit fretting about it and worrying about it and just start dropping to your knees right then and trusting in God. Turn to Psalms 37, 7 and 8. you get there, say amen. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because the man who brings wicked schemes to pass, cease from anger and for, forsake wrath. Do not fret. It only causes harm. You know, uh, You know what the scariest part about someone drowning is? Is, is trying to help them. Have you ever gotten in the water with someone who thought that they were drowning? Man, they will flat throw you under the boat to get on top of you, okay, to get a breath of air. You know, they used to tell people all the time to, to try to knock them out before you got a hold of them. They did. That's, that's how they used to tell them. Knock them out because if not, they'll drown you. Now, as scuba diving, I'll never forget this. They used to, uh, when you're scuba diving, if someone runs out of air, they said, don't, don't offer them your air piece because when they are in need of air, they're going to take it. Okay, they said, you start reaching for your extra one because they're jerking the one that's in your mouth out, okay, because they know that there is air there, okay. Um, I'll never forget a guy, well, I was scuba diving and a guy come up to me and did that. I had nothing but the mouthpiece in my mouth. He like grabbed a hold of it and jerked the regulator out of my mouth. I was like, well, I guess he's in need of some air, <laughs> Yeah, I'm telling you, you know, um, stop fearing and start trusting because just like that, cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret because it only causes harm. Whenever it, <clears throat> I'm, I'm one of those guys that if, if you're bleeding, if you've had something happen to you, I'm the person you want around. I really am. That doesn't freak me out, man. I can. I can handle blood and I can handle the turmoil and everything. Now, afterwards, after all that's over with, I'll fall all apart. But right there in the minute, man, I'm there. Unless it's one of my kids. If it's one of my kids, I am worthless. Okay? Uh, <clears throat> Y'all remember a time before uh, cell phones? Okay. Um, some of y'all. Might. <laughs> anyway, a time before cell phones, whenever you had the phone that plugged into the wall, remember that? And you had the, the cordless phone? Man, I remember whenever the cordless phone come out, I thought I was uptown. We had, we had the phone that was plugged into the wall and had the cordless phone right beside it. <clears throat> now, my daughter was my pride and joy. First child, a girl, first girl in the Roe family in seven generations. Didn't exactly know how to take care of a girl, but she got to be tough quick, okay? 
but she fell off of the back porch and hit her head. And I ran and grabbed her, and whenever I picked her up, she already redhead. She already had a lump sticking out about that far off of her head. And I freaked out and ran through the house and grabbed the phone to dial 911 and grabbed the corded phone and jerked it out of the wall, which shut down the wireless phone too. <laughs> In the midst of the storm, I freaked out and made everything extremely worse, okay? Extremely worse. Because being fearful, instead of stopping, taking a breath, figuring out what was wrong, overreacted, got everybody in the house in trouble. Don't fret. It only causes harm. You know, how many times in the Bible, how many times in the Bible did, did God or an angel or Jesus say, don't fear? Don't fear. Stop. Don't fear. Stop fearing, start trusting. Through experience, faith, scripture, testimony, learn how to handle your reactions to life. Amen? Through experience, see, how do you build faith? Faith is not faith until it's what? Tested. Right? See, it, it's, it's hard to put faith that these new cars with that auto steer, when you let go of the steering wheel, that it's going to stay in that lane whenever it starts drifting over, right? They've got them now that drive themselves almost. They've got, they've got them, I, I end up fighting with them. They, they try to drive and I want to turn and they're jerking the wheel back, you know. It's hard though to, to, to give the control over. See, but how do you do that in faith and knowing through experience that you can count on that and have faith? So how do you have faith in Jesus? By putting him to the test. See, if every time if you intercede, then you really don't ever have that faith in Jesus that he's going to handle it. Or he's going to give you the right answer. If you start reacting immediately, see the experience isn't there to be able to have the faith. The faith in Jesus and the faith in scripture. And so therefore, you're missing out on a good testimony. See, you could have this great testimony of how Jesus stepped in and, and helped you out and you didn't have to fret about it. But if you don't ever put the faith to the test and get the experience to be able to, to have more faith. See, faith is something that stretches that you get more and more of every time you use it. It's kind of like building, uh, building muscle and, and getting in shape. Whenever you're starting to build up muscle, man... The weight bar is there. You, you think that you could lift it, but you can't. And to, so you start off slow, and you start off with, with, with someone spotting you because you don't trust yourself, and you don't, trust, you don't know where you're at on it. And pretty soon, you, the, after you've lifted uh, 100 pounds a couple of times and bench pressed a couple of hundred pounds, and you're bench pressing a couple hundred pounds and, and you've done it with someone spotting you pretty soon that you realize, hey, I don't need someone to spot me on that. I know I can do that. Why? Because I have faith that I know that I can do it because I've done it before time and time again. So whenever you trust in Jesus, whenever you put your trust in him, whenever you give him over the controls, see, you, you, you learn to where you start giving them over to him and go concentrate on something else because you have faith that he's going to take care of it. Until you do the worry and the trouble. See, the worry and all that is not having faith. See, you've, you've 
put, you've put him to the test, but your faith isn't there long enough to step away and leave it alone. See, it's not just enough just to hand it over and then sit there and watch and make sure it hand, it's handled the way that you want it to be handled. Put faith in him, hand it over to him, and turn around and walk away from it. Give your cares to him, back up, and get out of it. Go to Exodus 14. Verse 13, you get there, say amen. Exodus 14, verse 13. You get there, say amen. And Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of of the Lord, which he, he will accomplish for you today. He didn't say, freak out. He didn't say, take off your shoes because it's going to be muddy. He didn't say, start swimming and, and maybe he'll make a way. No. What did he say? Do not be afraid. Stand still. In other words, step back in this chair right here and let me show you how it's done. Step back here, look ahead, and watch what God's fixing to do. I love that line. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. If you look that up, and if you go by that word by word, in what it means in Hebrew. It means stand back and watch the salvation through the stretched out arms. See, salvation comes through Jesus with the stretched out arms on the cross. See, he said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. Man, I love reading stories in the Old Testament like this to where God stepped in. One of my favorite ones is where, where he, he sent, the, <clears throat> sent them off in the battle and he told them to put the band out in front. <laughs> told them to take, take the band and stick the band out in front. They must have been some real bad musicians. <laughs> no, he put the band out in front. He told them, you play. And as they were playing, see, they couldn't see over the hill. But they knew that the camps were on the other side of the hill. And as the band started playing, the, the enemy down there got confused and started killing each other. And, and they got up and whenever they topped the top of the hill, they looked down and every one of them was already dead. That's some killer music right there, right? Amen. Amen. See, have faith in him. Why would you put your band out in front of the warriors? See, you'd think to put your warriors out in front to attack first. But see, they had faith. They put their faith in God. They put him, they, they did what he said. He told them to put the band out there first. The band went out and they never even had to lift a sword to kill off the enemy. And every one of them was dead. See, he'll fight for you. He's on your side. He's in your corner. Best cut man in the, in, in the whole world is Jesus. Turn to 1 Samuel 12, 16. First Samuel 12, 16. When you get there, say amen. Now, therefore, 
stand and see this great thing which the Lord will do before your eyes. Is today not the wheat harvest? I will call to the Lord and he will send thunder and rain that you may perceive and see that your wickedness is great which you have done in the sight of the Lord in asking a king for yourselves. See, we need to be still. We need to trust in him and have faith in his plan, not ours. We need to quit trying to take control and manipulate scriptures and manipulate God's will into doing to, for our own outcome. I've, I've been guilty of that time and time again, trying to manipulate God's will into working out for what I think it should be. God will get you out of the habit of that. He'll work you through that. All you have to do is get on a tour bus and go across the country on love offerings. He'll work you right out of that, won't he, honey? Yes, he will. Psalm 62, verse 5. When you get there, say amen. My soul waits silently for God alone, for my expectation is from him. Come on up, Ben. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. And today, in God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. I love the scripture that talks about how we need to put our faith in God where he will, to we will, he will, he'll lay out a meal in front of our enemies. Can you imagine going into battle, about to go into battle, and have the faith in God so much that, I mean, you get right up on the Goliath in your life, and you just break out a checkered red and white tablecloth and sit down and eat you a piece of chicken. That's what he's saying to do. He's saying, put your faith in me that I will, I, will, I will prepare a feast before your enemies. I mean, in the middle of the battle, just stop, lay down your checkered deal and eat you a piece of cold chicken. Put your faith in God. Put your faith in Jesus. John 16, 33. John 16, 33. When you get there, say amen. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulations. But be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. In other words, you don't have anything to worry about. I've already won. I paid the price. I've already done it. I have your back. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to fret. Isaiah 26, verse 3. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. You know, it hasn't been very many years ago that we, we saw a bunch of Christians lined up, getting ready to be executed. And they showed, they showed it on the internet. And I watched one of the guys there on his knees 
not crying, not heavy breathing, not even freaking out, just at peace. So you realize the only thing that humans could take from him is, is life here on earth. Just your life here on earth. Have peace and know that this ain't where it ends, people. This is where it just begins. This is where it just begins. We have an eternity in the arms of Jesus. Quit worrying so much about what's going on here. Like the sign says, quit worrying about getting your kids a scholarship to play ball, to get a, be a professional basketball player. Teach them about the Lord because there's 100% chance that they're going to need that. Quit worried about life and where you're getting in, in, in your work and where, where you're moving up in the career and quit, quit, quit putting all your focus on that and put your focus on the scriptures and your relationship with Christ. If you want to move up in the world, that'll move you right on up into heaven. Amen? Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your word. Lord, let us sometimes just stop and be still trust in you Lord until we do protect us from our stupid selves Lord in Jesus name we pray amen take me in by the blood of the lamb take me in to the holy of holies take the corn Cleanse my lips, take the coals, cleanse my lips, take the coals, cleanse my lips, here I am. Take me past the outer courts, into the holy place, past the brazen altar, Lord I want to see your face. Pass me by the crowds of people and the priests who sing your praise. I hunger and thirst for righteousness, but it's only found one place. Take me into the holy of holies. Take me in by the blood of the Lamb. Take me into the holy of holies. Take the cloak, cleanse my lips. Here I am. Praise God. Go out and tell someone about Jesus. Don't get. <laughs>